Good afternoon. My name is Steve Kenny. I think that a lot of people blame realtors for part of the problem of affordable housing in Denver. And I, I hear that all the time. They never say it to my face, but <laughs> I hear it all too often, especially as I'm out on the streets doing community activism. And I think that that's a problem. So um, we have an opportunity to be an ally and we have an opportunity to be a partner in this. And we need to find a way to engage realtors. And I'm very committed to, to working on that. So, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, I wasn't quite there. <laughs> so, um, I'm now ready to roll, thank you. So, this is a um, uh, house that's occupied 10 or 12 weeks a year in Boulder County. Um, the full-time caretaker lives above the garage. And uh, this is technically an ADU. This is something that a lot of people would describe if you ask them what is an ADU. It's probably not the ADU we need to be talking about. ADUs um, show up in many, many forms. There are three illustrations of many here. The first one is a detached structure from the main house. The other two are attached. These um, ADUs can be referred to as many, many things. Alley houses, granny flats, um, casitas, carriage houses, backyard cottages, caretakers' quarters, mother-in-law apartments. They have a separate entrance. They have their own kitchen, their own bathroom, their own sleeping areas. The important part is that an ADU is a self-contained dwelling unit that shares the lot and land of what's often a larger single unit dwelling, and it has the same owner. Here is a duplex. That is not an ADU. That's typically owned separately. A camper that a friend stashes in someone's backyard <laughs> is not an ADU, and nor is the tiny house that Cole just told us about. So ADUs are not a new concept. ADUs have been around for a long time. It's not at all uncommon that out showing houses in a week, I'll show six, eight, maybe even 10 houses that have an ADU of some form. Here in this 1930s built house, there's an ADU above the garage. In about 1960, we really started the seeing these things go away. Hopefully that's gonna change. This is a map of the city and county of Denver. The gray areas are depicting where ADUs are currently allowed. Now, Denver City Council just made a big change last month, which will eventually help us add a lot more of them as zoning updates are made to neighborhood plans. So hopefully we're gonna see many, many more of these. So we ask, why do we want ADUs? And there are a bunch of reasons. Um, this slide sort of depicting it is one that really shows us that we have two options in a rapidly growing city. Either we increase density, which ADUs do, or we get sprawl, and sprawl is a really bad thing for us. Another reason why do we need ADUs, um, there are a lot of our affordable, regular housing, owned housing, that's going away. If you look in the background of the picture on the left, there's a little house. In West Denver, where this is located, the home values have more than doubled in the last five years. And that's a big problem. Another reason we might want ADUs is a lot of seniors want family to be nearby, but not necessarily within the same four walls. I don't think I want to live with my mom, but I wouldn't mind having her very close, or I wouldn't mind being close to her. Um, boomerang kids, total failure to launch kids. And <laughs> I, I'm serious about that. Um, OK, <laughs> to keep up here, I'm going to jump in. This house is owned by clients of mine um, Brad and Karen, they bought it about 11 years ago. They live out of town. It's a rental house for them. At the point at which they had two adult kids and two grandkids all in Denver, they decided they wanted a part-time residence. The ADU that they built in the back turned out to be perfect for them. This is a Airbnb. Um, it's a little granny flat out in the back. It's a garage that was converted a long time ago and recently renovated. These, a lot of people point at as being part of the affordable housing pr problem yet a lot of the Airbnb owners don't even understand that concept. So we talk about why else are they really important to have. Um, it's potentially the housing that's missing in the middle, the housing that's gonna keep people from displacement from the neighborhoods where they have been for a very, very long time and where we really would like to see them stay. Costs are a big factor and a big problem to building ADUs. If you call builders, as I did, and say, hey, what's it gonna cost to build a six or 700 square foot ADU? You're probably gonna hear something between 230 and $500,000. Yeah. 
That's clearly not affordable to even a lot of people who have $800,000 houses. We have community backlash and pushback from the neighbors. I would refer to this as the UFO alien has landed <laughs> atop this poor little innocent former garage. And you can understand why neighbors might not like that for privacy, for setbacks, for who's going to be renting it. Is it going to be a 420 friendly? Who knows? Anyway, another problem that we have with getting ADUs to work is we need to be able to get loans on them. So mortgage appraisers or, or home appraisers don't really understand these things. Home mortgage underwriters don't understand them. And in many cases, they're requiring someone to show an income stream from something that hasn't been built yet. So that's a problem. We need to figure this out. I am happy to uh, mention that a woman named Renee Martinez Stone who is part of an organization in Denver. I want to make sure I get this right. Um, it is the West Denver Renaissance Collaborative, I think. I'm now I've lost the place in my notes. Um, they're doing something really unique. They have a goal of building 250 ADUs in Denver in the next five years. They have 10 of them that they intend to do in 2019. Five of them are already underway. This photo here is of students at Green Mountain High School in Lakewood. They are building a modular ADU that will be moved to Denver's west side neighborhood called Westwoods. And they're doing some really innovative things. They are working tirelessly to find a way to be able to keep people in the communities where they have roots. And they're trying to find ways to create income streams for homeowners for rental income that will help them pay things like very quickly rising property taxes. They're working very diligently to find opportunities so that these homeowners who may build them are going to have a situation where they have a rental property, and in this case, those rentals have to be rented to people who are making less than 80% of the AMI um, in Denver. So I don't know exactly where we go from here to engage realtors. I don't know exactly where we go from here to help people like Renee Martinez Stone. But being out on the streets and talking to people is certainly going to be one of those things. And I have recently committed myself to the affordable and attainable housing crisis in Denver. And as I learn more, I'm very happy to share the information that I have and the resources that I now have in my pocket as well. Thank you.